Thank you, Gurinda, very much for giving me your time. I love the film. It's very moving. Thank you. I wanted to ask you, so uh, was it important to you after all that historical research to, uh, there's almost no villains because you kind of humanize the villains. You uh, you kind of, um, you make them victims. All, all the big guys who are traditional villain vi villains, you know, the Viceroy, Sir Cyril Radcliffe, even Jeet, who is actually so loyal to the British, he actually is, you know, he has forefathers were at Jallianwala Bagh, but he's so decent uh, and values honor. So was this a very important running thread in your film? I think being British and Indian, mm -hmm. I have that British quality in me yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> where I look, you know, for fairness yeah. in some ways. Yeah. But at the same time, I'm Indian, you yeah, know. Yeah. And I feel that I want... It was too easy to mm -hmm. make a film on partition which had villains and heroes. Yeah. I think it was a very tragic, complex time yes. for everybody involved, from up there to down there. You know, the nations involved still haven't gotten over it, you know. Yes, yes. Um, there have been so many wars and so many skirmishes still to this day. And the aggravation between India and Pakistan continues. Mm. And I think that... It's a very sore subject. So in order to, for me, you know, my, my desire was to talk about what actually happened rather than uh, ignore the role that the British played, actually bring that to the fore. Because I know uh, in India particularly, everyone blames Mountbatten for partition. And once I found this evidence, I wanted to show that actually Unlike how I had felt growing up, that somehow partition was our fault mm. because I had been taught this in British schools, you know, here was an opportunity for me to say, actually, that's not the truth. Mm. There were major geopolitical things going on behind the scenes. But having said that, I also wanted to show that everything happened so fast that there were a lot of blunders on all parts. A lot of people were involved in the death of my aunt who starved to death during yeah. partition. Yeah. So I was looking at the human side. I was trying to humanize Gandhi, Nehru, Jinnah, Mountbatten, the, the, you know, the servants, Jeet, yes. Alia. Yeah. They were all equal to me, and mm. I wanted to have their human responses. And they all were acting in their own interests. Jinnah was acting in his own interests. He might be the villain for Indians, but for Pakistanis, he was delivering them what he set out to do as a politician. However, one of the things that's important for me in the film is we have Jinnah's speech where he talks about what this country should represent, what Pakistan should mean. And it's supposed to be a secular, tolerant country, welcoming to all, you know. So in that sense, you know, I wanted to point to everybody at that time, what their feelings were. Now, with Gandhiji, he had taken a vow of silence on the day that uh, partition was announced. Was that the right thing to do? Should he have carried on demonstrating, or had he been sidelined mm. at that point? Mm. You know, that's an interesting question to ask, because obviously the partition was something that Gandhiji never wanted, and in many ways he was right in terms of what happened. But then why did uh, Sadar Patel, Nehruji, not listen to him? You know, I think that it's too easy to blame one person. However, I do think the biggest tragedy of all was that the British and the Americans had already got a plan. Way before Mountbatten came out to India, and I think that Nehruji and Gandhiji never really knew about it. And really looked to India like this and the future of India like this, whereas the British and the Americans were looking at the wider geopolitics and what was going to become the Cold War and how they could control Asia. Um, that really was the tragedy of partition. Yeah. Do you find when you... Uh, when you've kind of blunted the edge of the villains and humanized them or made them, in a sense, also victims or puppets of history, uh, do you find this as just fundamental drama, it kind of blunts the edge because there's no one big villain and a big triumph against them? As a, uh, did you find a challenge as a screen in screen writing? Well, I think it points to which kind of filmmaker you are. I mean, I'm always looking to make the world a better place. You know, I believe that as humans, 
you know, there's more that unites us than divides us. I feel that we can all be better to each other. We can be kinder to each other, you know. We have to be. I have to think like that because I'm a mother. Why would I want to raise my children to hate another group of people? You know, it's not natural instinct for mothers to behave like that. And I think that, you know, for me, I wanted to say, yes, partition happened 70 years ago. Yes, it was a tremendous tragedy, certainly for my family and certainly for me, because that's my homeland over there. And today I can't even get a visa to go to oh, Pakistan, yeah. you know, yeah. so for me that's a tragedy. But we have to move on, you know, we have to move on. And we are linked culturally, we always will be. Our food, our clothes, our language, our music, you know, yeah. we're linked and we always will be. And we need to look at those positives to move on now. And now that I feel we can rest the blame, yeah. On, on who actually was to blame for yeah. partition. Yeah. I think we now as nations need to say, right, that happened, let's move on. How can we make better the situation? Uh, do you, uh, what kind of reception do you imagine in UK or US or India, Pakistan? Do, do you feel, uh, from the points that came at the press conference, do you feel our audience is sufficiently politically engaged to be thinking, you know, in America they had all these walks, but yeah. not so much in India and Pakistan. Do you feel we are politically engaged enough to, to absorb your message of the film? I can't speak on behalf of India and its people. I can only do what I think. Uh, for me, I wanted to make a film to show people like my children and, you know, my relatives, children, something about their history. Very few people in Britain and in America particularly know that partition ever happened. People have no idea. So really the film is aimed at people who have no idea what happened yeah. at that time. Yeah. And also I think in India and Pakistan, very few people talk about it. So even for young people in India, I think it'll be an education yeah. to, to learn what happened during that time. Yeah. But I think there are obviously in India experts who have studied this area and know this area inside out. I don't think particularly this film is going to be for them, you know, because it's aimed more at people who know nothing. I don't even necessarily know that where India or Pakistan is on the map. Yeah. In some cases, you know, in America, they don't even know. But I feel that my responsibility as a British Indian is, is, to, create, is to make a film that, that is resonant for today, for, for, for my children living in the West and, and, and for going beyond India and Indians is to make a film that shows what happens when, when you start dehumanizing one community and start scapegoating another community and start seeing, mes uh, start seeing um, messages of hate towards one group or another divisive action, it leads to divide and rule, but ultimately it will lead to, to violence and death. That is the lesson of yeah. partition for everybody, not just Indians and Pakistanis. Yeah, I loved it so much that you, you made, uh, Edwina's character, I really loved it because it, it brought the woman's perspective you're talking about. Yes. She was always having empathy, but also quite clever as a politician. Um, yeah. but, but more the wiser decisions. But I think she was like that. Edwina yeah. was the more political one. Mm. And actually, Mount Batten actually says that. Yeah. He yeah. says, my, my wife is more to the left, he says. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know? <laughs> um, and I think she was the astute one yeah. between them, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, I think Mount Batten was definitely out of his depth. I think he went there full of charm. Uh, in order to hand India back, and very soon realised he was out of his depth. It was a difficult situation. He was the king's cousin. He was always very concerned about his royal uh, uh, presence and reputation. And I think that he he was used in many ways, you know, precisely because he wasn't a politician, mm. uh, to get the job of partition done yeah. in the way that the people who are orchestrating it from behind the scenes yeah. wanted it to be done. Yeah, lovely. Thank you Thank very you. much for your time. You're really welcome. appreciate it. You're welcome. That was so kind of you. Lovely. I was howling.